was 27 years old, I left a very demanding job in management consulting. For a job that was even more demanding, teaching. I went to teach seven years math in the New York City Public Schools. And like any teacher, I made quizzes and tests, I gave a homework assignments. When the work came up, I picked very grades. What struck me was that IQ was not the only difference between my best and my worst students. Some of my strongest performance did not test very great IQ scores. Some of my smartest kids weren't doing so well. And that got me thinking. The kinds of things to learn in seventh grade math sure did hurt. Ratios, that's almost the area for parallelogram, but this concept are not impossible. And I was firmly convinced that every one of my students could learn the material if they work hard and long enough. After several more years of teaching, I came to the conclusion that what we need in education is a much better understanding of students and learning from a motivational perspective, from a psychological perspective. In education, the one thing we know how to measure best is IQ. But what if doing well in school and in life depends on much more than the ability to learn quickly and easily? So I left the classroom and I went to graduate school to become a psychologist. I studied certain kids and adults in all kinds of super challenging settings. And in every story, my question was, who is successful here and why? My research when I went to West Point Military Academy. We tried to predict which cadets would stay in military training and which would drop out. We went to the National Spelling League and tried to predict which children would advance bodies in competition. We studied working teacher working in lowly tough neighborhoods, asking, which teacher are still going to be here in teaching by the end of the school years? And of those, who will be the most effective and improving learning outcomes for your students? We partnered with private companies asking, which of these sales people is going to keep their jobs? And who's going to earn the most money? In our jobs, very different contexts, one characteristic emerged as a synonym for each of success. And it wasn't social intelligence, it wasn't good looks, physical health, and it was an IQ. It was grit. Grit is passion and perseverance for very long term goals. Grit is having stamina. Grit is sticking with your future day in, day out, not just for the week, not just for the month, but for years, and working really hard to make that true reality. Grit is living life like it's a marathon, not a sprint. A few years ago, I started studying grit in the Chicago Public School. I asked thousands of high school juniors to take great questionnaires, and they were around more than a year to see who would graduate. Turns out that greater kids were significantly more likely to graduate. Even when I matched them on every characteristic I could measure, things like family income, standardized achievement test score, even how safe kids felt when they were at school. So it's not just at West Point or National Stanley that grit matters, it's also in school, especially for kids at risk for dropping out. To me, the most shocking thing about grit is how little we know, how little science knows about building it. Every day, parents and teachers ask me, how do I build grit in kids? What do I do to teach kids a solid work ethic? How do I keep them better for the long run? The honest answer is, I don't know. What I do know is that talent doesn't make you great. Our data show very clearly that there are many talented individuals who simply do not follow through on their commitments. In fact, in our data, grit is usually unrelated or even inversely related to measures of talent. So for the best idea I've heard about building grit in kids is something called growth mindset. This is an idea developed at Stanford University by Carol Dweck. And it is the belief that the ability to learn is not fixed, that it can change with your effort. Dr. Dweck has shown that when kids read and learn about the brain and how it changes and grows response to challenge, they are much more likely to perseverance when they fail because they don't believe that failure is a permanent condition. So growth mindset is a great idea for building grit. But we need more, and that's where I'm going to end my remarks. Because that's where we are, that's the work that stands before us. 
we need to take our best ideas, our strongest intuitions, and we need to test them. We need to measure, measure whether we've been successful. And we have to be willing to fail, to be wrong, to start over again with lessons learned. In other words, we need to be greedy about getting our kids greater than you.